Hi guys, Chris and Jack. Hello. From Decimal Studios. And we're gonna start a new series uh, called Mix Breakdown. Um, we're gonna break down a mix from Arcane Roots. The track is called Curtains from the album Melancholia Hymns, which was released in September 2017. Um, so first off, we're gonna take a look at the drums. So in this session, there were electronic drums and there were also some live drums. So we'll just quickly listen first to a small section. This is a small section of the electronic drums. Cool, and then this is a small section of the live drums. Cool, so you get the idea there. Okay, so we'll start with the live drums and we have uh, two mics on the kick with two different samples. We have uh, two snare mics, one top, one bottom, with a snare trigger channel as well. Uh, we have two toms, one up, one down. They've got a spot mic on them each. Um, we've got spot mic on the hats, spot mic on the rides. We have overhead mics. Uh, we have a mono room and a stereo room. So let's have a look and break them down. So let's listen to the kick first of all. So the live kick. So the first mic would have been a D6, just inside the shell, and a sub kick on the outside. And then what I've done in this session as well is just blended that with an electronic sample. This was because the uh, earlier in the song there is uh, quite a lot of electronic drums. This was just sort of blend that crossover. Um, so it wasn't like such a stark uh, change from electronic drums into live drums. This was just going to sort of beef it up a little bit. And then that is married with this sample here, which is bringing, which is Stephen Slate. And we're bringing in just a bit of room and then just a, a bit of bit of beef from that kick, basically. So let's have a quick listen to those. And then we'll have a listen. So let's listen to the live kick. Let's take out the sample. Cool, so it's pretty weighty. Let's listen without plugins. So it sounds good already. It, it doesn't, I'm not trying to do anything crazy with the plugins when I'm mixing. I always say that if you start with a good recording, when you go into the mix, you're just going to go a step up. So you're going to go from good to great. So if it was a bad recording, you can only get to, you know, without some heavy editing or heavy, you know, processing, you're going to just level up basically. So I always aim to, you know, have everything recorded well before I start mixing. So you can hear that here. The kick sounds like we want it to sound. It's, it's weighty and it's just punchy basically. So the first plugin we've got on the group, because what I do is I've got the two mics going into, a, into an auxiliary, just into a group, and then I manipulate those as a whole rather than separately. On the sub, I've just filtered out the super highs, or just getting the, you know, the super lows coming through. So then they're both busting to here. So I've got drum leveler, just to make it consistent, nothing crazy. I even think this is just the factory default that comes up, actually, except for I've gated it ever so slightly. So this, this plugin just evens out the inconsistencies. Nothing crazy there. So then we have Slate's VMR. Let's work this on loop. So what modules have I got going on here? So actually only got three modules going on here. So I got, haven't got this compressor, so let's just get rid of that. And let's get rid of this here too. 
So in here, just got two EQs with this Revival harmonic exciter in there. A little bit, little bit of thickness, a little bit of shimmer, and then just EQ from these two different EQs basically. This is obviously a Neve emulated EQ and this is an SSL emulated EQ. So just adding a bit of 700 hertz here, a bit of the low end, what we've got here just a bit of one there, and then some higher frequencies up here. Nothing too crazy. And then, <clears throat> God, this is my favorite compressor for kick drum. Um, it's the 1176 from Universal Audio. So attack and release. These are set to um, slow attack, fast release. Um, we're hitting minus three. So nothing too crazy because we've got this drum leveler evening out the, the hits. We'll just try to get maybe just a little bit of color from this and just a little bit more evening out with this compressor here. Cool, and then just got Cambridge EQ, just notching out 129. Obviously felt it's just a tad little boxy at that frequency in the whole mix. Cool, and let's listen with the sample. Cool, so that sample, like I said before, is bringing in just a little bit more room and a little bit of weight from that, from that kick sample. Okay, so that's the kick drum. Actually, the um, the kick sample and the live kick are going to a group, and that has just got Waves L1 limiter on it. Just, let's have a quick listen to what it's doing. It's probably not doing much. It's probably just giving us a bit more, just leveling it out just a little bit. Yeah, just giving it a little bit more level. Great, so let's move on to the snare. So the live snare. And let's listen without the plugins. On all of the tracks, I use this um, Waves NLS Nonlinear Summer, um, and that's across the whole mix. Um, I just find it adds a little bit just a little bit of warmth, just, just a little bit of glue. Uh, so let's go back to the snare. So raw snare. We have snare top, snare bottom, together. So both of them have got this massy tape head, which is just adding Just an extra little bit of beef. Always like the bright setting of this. Sounds just a little bit more aggressive. Again, we've got the drum leveler. Which is just evening out the hits. Especially for the sort of roll sections. I find it helps just to just bring that intensity up. And then again, we've got Slate's virtual mix rack. So we've got quite a lot in here, so let's listen. So this is the raw live um, snare channels, just a tiny bit of that tape head. And as, with everything else, I would have done some EQ and some compression on the way in as well. So the snare was probably going into um, the warm audio um, WA-76. Um, and then it would have been going into the Audient ASP 4816 with just a little bit of EQ. So let's go back to the snare. So first EQ, minor really, but just adding a bit of highs, a bit of 3.2, a bit of one here um, with this parallel, parallel compression on this uh, compressor here. Again, nothing crazy, ratio four to one, medium medium attack, fast-ish release. It's just, just adding a little bit of extra weight there. Um, next EQ, the SSL again, just adding a little bit of the lows, just some more highs. Revival, just adding a bit, bit of fatness, 
but the shimmer on the top again and then this FG bomber which just gives you just gives you a little bit more thwack on the transients and that's it that's it on the live snare so relatively simple really I think that the simplest option is always the best and if you start chucking in loads of EQs and you start cutting and boosting loads of frequencies you just have this mess that doesn't really work that well together. So let's have a look at the sample. So our sample is coming from Slate's Trigger and we've got two samples along with their room mic. So we've got snare 5 which sounds like this. And then we've got snare 17, which sounds like that. So we're just trying to build up the tones basically. So that along with the real snare. So the sample is mainly there to add a little bit of fatness, some consistency and then mainly just some some room um, because once you start getting the rooms up from your live kit you're just gonna have more and more hi-hats more and more cymbals and it's just gonna start turning into a mess so I like to use slate trigger just to bring in some more room just to give it a bit more space okay let's have a look at what we've got going oh and again we've got the uh, L1 limiter um, on the group of all the snares. So we've got the live snare and the trigger going into a subgroup and then they're being squished by this L1 here. Okay, so toms. So with the toms, quick listen to, as you can see here, I've got, this is the, the live tracks of the toms. And what I've done is I've gone through and we took samples of the kit as we're at the end of the recording session and then what I've done is I've gone through and replaced I probably replaced yeah I would replaced the samples from the actual kit manually and put them on this track so let's have a quick listen to just this the, the tom channels and over here reason for this is just to eliminate as much of the uh, spill as possible because because this end of the track is pretty heavy I just want the toms to you know absolutely punch through and that's kind of difficult sometimes when a drummer has the kit set up and the cymbals are quite close to the toms when you've just got so much spill so this will it basically eliminates all of the spill but you still get the actual natural kit sound so when you start blending with the overheads in the rooms there's you know it's coherent rather than adding in a sample that sounds totally different to the overheads or the room so let's have a look what plugins we've got on there so both of them would have had vmr on it so let's listen let's listen to the raw drums so again the drums, they sound great. They, you know, they're tuned to the key of the song and, you know, there's like, there's no spill. So, you know, we can actually manipulate them with EQ and compression so much that, and we don't have to worry about that spill. So let's have a look what we've got on the high tom. So high tom, got a lot of highs up there. loop and let's take these off one by one so our first EQ the SSL emulation this is adding some sub 100 lows we've got a filter at 40 Hertz and then we've got uh, just high mids just slight boost so just a you know, 3 dB at uh, six and a half, and then uh, 
just a boost on the super highs and then a boost on the highs at two. I think it's just to make them really cut through the mix. Um, revival again, shimmer and thickness, small amounts, gives them a little bit of excitement. And then compressor, not doing too much, barely getting to you know, minus three, just to add a little bit of color really. And then the FG bomber again, just to give you some more attack on those transients. And we've got another EQ here, which is doing, okay, so that's just taking out 400 Hertz. And then pretty much we've had the same thing on the floor tom. Looks almost identical. Again, just adding those sub lows, filtering at 40, 48 Hertz this time. Again, just a you know high high mid and high boost with the Cambridge EQ just notching out 400 hertz again, slightly deeper this time. Okay, on to the hats. So the hats and ride. Not really doing much in the mix. They're just there to add a little bit of stereo width and I'd say they've got not much processing on them. So just, you know, low cut there, more lows taken out there. Nothing crazy on these. These have probably had the same treatment. Um, I do actually have them compressed, so I've got them compressed, actually not that much. Three to one ratio, fast release, um, picking up the peaks rather than RMS and it's hitting about it's hitting about minus three so just just a light compression just to make sure it doesn't peak too much i suppose but our main hats and ride will come from the overheads and the room um so let's have a listen let's have a listen to the overheads let's go to So let's take off, let's take off the processing. So again, NLS uh, uh, channel there, and then on the rooms. Oh, let's just listen to the, let's listen to the overhead. Sorry, this is the overhead just au naturel. So this is the drums were recorded at decimal, um, and the studio is made up of um, wood floor, uh, plasterboard walls, some slate walls as well. So it's it's quite it's quite a dead room, um, but as the room isn't that large or it's not that reflective, I like to add in um, an IR um, reverb just to make the space sound a little bit larger and on this one I've gone for um, impulse response of cello studio this is the waves IR1 uh, and I've just blended it in 50 50 so let's have a quick listen to that without it cool so it just gives it a little bit just gives it a little bit more depth and I do the same thing on the rooms as well, on this track. So let's have a look at uh, Slate's VMR again. What have we got going on? So, just um, inverting the polarity here, just to match up with uh, whatever's going on, the, the kick and snare and toms. Um, the SSL emulation EQ, just boosting seven kilohertz and above, not by much, four dB. And then we're just nicking out nearly 600 hertz, just 3 dB. So let's have a look into, this is not doing anything, this is doing something slightly. So listen to that EQ. So again, not doing a huge amount, 
But just once everything's together, it's probably just bringing those cymbals out a little bit more. And then this compressor here, just on a heavy compression, but just bringing a little bit of it in. And then we've got the Cambridge EQ again, just nicking out frequencies that I probably didn't like at the time. So we've got 150 hertz being dipped there. I think that was just to reduce. Have a quick listen. Yeah, I think it was just to reduce the snare in, in the overheads. And then again, probably just one of the symbols a little bit, tiny, tiny bit harsh, so I've just nicked it out there. So that's the overheads. Uh, mono room, which isn't doing much. I think I just, what I do with this mono room is I normally distort it quite a bit. Let's pull it up a little bit. Here. Distort it quite a lot with this, with this uh, devil lock. Uh, and then I just blend it in ever so slightly. Just to, just to give it a bit of vibe, basically. And again, that's got the uh, Waves IR1 on it. Okay, on to the rooms. So the rooms. Cool, so they would have been at the back of the room uh, and they would have been ribbons, they'd have been the Roya R121s. Um, I've added on a little bit of extra reverb, um, but I've actually taken out the wet, sorry, the dry, and just blended the full wet in there of the same, the same studio that's on the overheads, so Cello Studio One. So it just creates, just creates a larger room for the rooms. So let's look at what we've got on the Slate VMR. Cool, so I'll leave that as we're literally just trimming that. So a bit of EQ, not much. I've just nicked out anything below two, 277. Just obviously once I had the rooms up at the level that I liked, I was just hearing a little bit too much low end of the kick drum. So I was just pulling that down. Um, and then we're nicking out just middly boxy sound, you know, 600 hertz, just 3 dB. Nothing crazy again. And then we've got some parallel compression going on here, but not too heavy. Not too heavy on the rooms because I do have a separate, um, a separate parallel compression channel for the drums that everything goes to. So just doing little bits by little bits. So we've got a little bit here and then we'll have a, a, a lot more at the end to create that, you know, thick sound. Uh, and then we've also got the highs boosted here because they're because the ribbons are quite dark, this is why I've given it quite a lot on this high lift here. And like this, like I say, this trimmer was just pulling down the level. It's obviously got too much. So let's have a listen to everything together. Let's listen to the outro now. So, on the drum bus. So all of these channels go into this one drum bus which has the 1176 on it again. Same as what I had on the uh, kick. So we've got a uh, slow attack, fast release, and we're gonna, we're hitting, we're not even hitting one dB. So this is just to nick those tiny peaks um, and just to add a little bit of color. But then we've got drum parallel compression, which I call drum crush. And that again, 1176, heavily compressed. So fast release, um, 
faster attack. But yeah, heavily compressed, we're hitting, you know, we're gonna be hitting minus seven. I'll probably hit more than that sometimes, but it just depends how much sort of feedback I get from the cymbals as I'm driving it in and how I've got the two, two balance. So let's pull this back to here. So together. Cool, so we've got like a large sounding live drum kit. I, don't, I mean, we're using triggers, but I, I like the triggers just to add a little bit of weight, a little bit of room. I don't like them to be super metal, so it's, you know, it doesn't sound like a live drummer. I like to keep that. I like to blend the best of both worlds. So you have the live drums, but then you have the consistency of samples, um, you know, especially as we've got electronic drums earlier in the song, which are so consistent that the, the live drums need to keep up with that, basically. Um, and then we've got two more channels on the drums. So we've got two verb channels, basically. First one is a Let's Go 224. And this is just a 0.9 um, seconds. So this is just adding just a, a little bit more room again. So. So it's just putting it in a space, it's just putting it in, in, in a real room, basically. Okay, and the last channel, we've got a longer plate, uh, two seconds, and that is being fed by the hats, the overheads, and the room. So there's no actual, there's no direct mics going to there it's just to add a little bit a larger space to the the overheads the and the and the room mics so let's have a quick listen go so as I was saying I don't like the samples to like dominate the mix so let's have a quick listen to the drums without the samples uh, here we go cool we'll add the samples back in so we'll start with the kick sample Cool, so it's not, so that kick sample isn't replacing the kick drum, it's just adding extra weight and extra definition. And we can still hear the live recording, basically. So let's, let's do the same with the snare, so snare without. The so live snare. Yeah, we've got a lot of weight coming from the, the overhead, so. Cool, so there's a lot a lot of the kit coming from the overheads in the room. And then put the sample in. Cool, so for me, that snare sample is adding, it's adding just a little bit, bit of space and a little bit more weight. But it's not shaping the sound of the drums, it's just adding for me, it's not replacing. Okay, let's move on to the electronic drums. Let's have a quick listen to them. Cool, so these drums were created on the Electron Rhythm um, by Andrew and Jack. Um, let's have a look what we've got here. So first one in our list. It's like a glitch beat. Second one in the list. Oh, there's an intro kick, so at the start of the song, there's just a solo kick with the keys and vocal. So 
that's just there. Let's put that up there. Um, so in this part, we've got this kick. And we've got a second kick here. We've got two snares. So one's like a white noise snare and then a rim snare. They just play together at the same time. And we've got a another snare there. That's all the snares. And then we've got this sort of percussion beep, which just plays throughout. And we've got like this beep riser. And then we've got hats and a glitch channel. There's the hats and Okay, so we've got all of these channels going into subgroup uh, for the drums, and then we've got select channels going into this reverb here. So let's have a listen without the reverb. Cool. So let's have a look what we've got. So on this glitch, so this is a glitch beat that got blended with the main, the main loop. And on that channel, just filled out the lows just so that it sort of gels with the main beat a lot more because within that uh, glitch beat, there, there's some kick drums in there and I just filtered those lows out just so that it blended a little bit better with the loop. Um, but again, keeping everything as simple as possible, um, we've not got a lot of processing going on on these electronic drums. So on this kick drum, we've got uh, Sound Toys Psy Q, and we're just pulling out the highs. So let's have a listen. So these kick drums here. Just pulling, pulling out that sort of, you know, high transient clicky thing, just to sort of soften it a little bit. And then this snare channel here, which is the is like the white noise snare, which starts starts in verse two through the chorus and the middle. That has this filter, oh sorry, this uh, EQ notch at two kilohertz, just at the beginning of the song. And then that later comes off in, in the middle when more elements are added in. So I think it was just cutting through a little bit too much at the beginning. And then later on in the song, it you know, needed those extra you know high mids just to cut through so the snare rim that's going with that nothing on that snare rim so that's just what came out of the electron the next channel against that after that is yeah, another snare so this other snare has just got just a high high cut filter on there I think sounded like it was just a little bit too harsh in the mix so just just sort of blend blend it in the background a bit cool next channel after that is the beep there's no nothing on that channel uh, hi-hats a bit of EQ just nicking off the top fractionally and the glitch channel it's got a L1 limiter I think it was just to sort of balance that out a little bit, filtered out the lows, and then just a tiny bit of the highs. So all those channels run into this one subgroup, which has a Harrison EQ on it, but 
there's nothing on there. So I think at the time it was boosted, but then once you, when I started getting the whole mix together, it felt like it was, you know, the EQ wasn't necessary, so I just pulled it back. Uh, and then we've just got this compressor from UAD, the Fatso, which is just doing minus, minus three game reduction at points. So nothing too heavy, just to sort of glue it together. Uh, and then an L1, which actually didn't get used. Cool, and then on this verb channel, so the, the electronic drums got their own verb, we have on here, tiny bit of EQ. Uh, and then we've got a longish reverb, three seconds. And then we've got, uh, got the uh, LA, 2A after the reverb, just because I didn't want to add any any more reverb, didn't want to add any length or or you know too much volume. I just wanted to level out the the reverb that was there. So it's actually you can see it's quite heavily compressed, heavily compressed, just to just to really glue that reverb to the the uh, the electronic drums without getting too messy. Let's listen without. Cool, so you can still hear it. It's the same length, but whacking it in just makes it more apparent. Okay, so that's it for the drums. Next week, we're going to look at the bass and guitar. Uh, please hit the like and subscribe button. We'll see you next week.